dear students assalamu alaikum in the last class we were discussing the topic economic environment today we will continue this topic and in this topic we will discuss demand and supply analysis and market equilibrium and today we will try to complete our topic economic environment in demand and supply analysis first we discuss demand separately then supply separately and then we combine demand and supply in market in the previous lecture we discussed about the uh, major components of of any economy and as we discussed that there are two major components of any any economy one is the um, sectors and other one is the markets and then finally we discuss the interaction between the sectors and markets in order to complete uh, any business or production or manufacturing activity now before we going into the uh, discussion of demand and supply one thing i would like to mention over here that whenever we are we developed any sort of law we always develop laws in controlled environment for example if you are going to develop uh, if you are going to to check some chemical reaction or you want to develop a relationship between two different chemicals you have to control the environment in a way you have to control the uh, the temperature of the environment you, different variables existing in the environment which may affect uh, uh, the chemical reaction of uh, of those components same as with the case of the uh, law of the physics and same is the case of the laws of economics whenever we are developing the laws even in economics we take some assumptions we take some factors and variables constant so that we can easily develop a relationship and the later on whatever the restriction we have applied on the variable and the later on by removing the restriction on such variables we we uh, study the effect on the on on laws or on relationship but initially while we are developing the relationships or while we are developing the laws we always develop in the control environment taking this particular point into the cons uh, in, into your mind let's discuss about the law of our demand law of our demand is the very basic law of economics and this law says taking other things constant and that situation is known as ceteris paribus whenever we are saying ceteris paribus it means we are taking uh, some factors constant whenever we are saying ceteris paribus that means we are taking some variables constant and studying some um, relationship between some specific variables now we have taken all other factors constant which may affect the demand but if price of a commodity increases what will happen to the to the quantity demanded the quantity demanded will decrease that means in law of demand we are basically trying to develop a relationship between price of a commodity and its quantity demanded what 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 other factors which can affect the quantity demanded of any product we have taken those factors as constant so according to the law of demand if price of a commodity x x could be any any commodity and px uh, would be used for the price of x if price of a commodity x increases what will happen to its uh, quantity demanded its quantity demanded or the or the demand of that particular commodity will decrease that means in law of demand we develop a relationship between quantity demanded of product x and price of product x and on the basis of this relationship which we have uh, just mentioned in the law of demand we develop this demand equation this is the very simple equation of the mathematics this is the equation of the straight line and this equation indicates there is negative relationship between price of commodity x and quantity demanded of commodity x whenever the price increases quantity demanded will decreases or vice versa so uh, and now, now there could be a question arises from your side that why we are taking straight line um, uh, as a demand equation 
there is a possibility that demand equation won't be a straight line but just to understand the concept just to understand the relationship between two variables we are taking the most simplest equation of the mathematics uh, importance is the relationship not the degree of the equation and this sign is basically indicating that important relationship which we need to apply on the basis of this particular uh, demand equation we can develop this type of the demand curve at this axis we have price prices and at this axis we have quantity demanded okay F according to the law of demand if price increases demand decreases if, if we move in this direction if we move in this direction that means pr if price decreases from p2 to p1 the quantity demanded will increases from q2 to q1 right but this only can happen if we if we take many other things constant and most important thing is the supply we we are not involving the supply as we are, we have initially said taking other things constant the supply is also part of the other things so we have taken all the other factors which can affect the quantity demanded as constant we are just studying the effect of price on the demand of the commodity now one important thing is as these two variables are uh, on uh, axis so whatever the changes will happen we move along the curve if price increases we move from from in upper direction from down to up if price decreases we we move in downward direction from up to down whatever the case is we move along the curve now let's discuss about the determinants of the demand determinants of the demand are basically those those factors which we initially take a, as constant and those uh, factors or those determinants are are basically include taste fashion preferences income prices of related products Uh, like substitutes and complements future expectation etc these are some of the variables which can affect the demand of any commodity other than the price of the commodity for example x is in fashion or it is a seasonal product then what will happen even if price increases customers won't decrease the demand of x why because that product is in fashion or this product uh, is seasonal product and and the season uh, requires season requirement is high for that particular product same is the case for the income for example income of a consumer uh, increases and price of the con uh, price of the product x is also increases in that case as income uh, uh, also increases the customer will not decrease the demand though uh law of demand says if price increases demand should decrease but uh, at the same time income is also increasing that is why consumer is, uh, consumer won't decrease the demand of um, of that product whenever there is a change in the determinants of demand we will move from one demand curve to the another demand curve that means whenever determinants will affect the quantity demanded there must be a shift in the demand curve either outward or inward depending on a situation now recall whenever the price of a product increases or decreases we move along the curve why because price is the axis variable but whenever there is any change in the in the list of these determinants we will not move along the curve but we shift the curve either outward or inward why because these determinants are not the are not are axis variable so that means that means for example if income increases price remains constant and income increases what will happen the demand will also increase 
Why? Because now consumer have more purchasing power to buy that product. So the demand curve will shift from D3 to D1. That means outward. For example, currently we are at this particular demand curve. Right? In this, uh, we are at this particular demand curve and this is the point where the, where the consumer is. Price of a product is constant, but the season, uh, this is not the season of a product. What will happen? The demand will decrease. So we will shift this demand curve from D, D1 to D3. Even at a constant price, we will decrease the, price, uh, the demand of a product. Why? Because it is out of a season product. So whenever there is any change in the determinants of the pro, uh, in, in determinants of the demand, the demand curve will shift. Now, for example, let's let's discuss about the prices of related products. Let's discuss about the substitutes. Okay, we draw a demand curve of X over here and a demand curve of Y over here. X and Y are closely substitute. Closely substitute means we can use Y for X and X for Y. This is the demand curve for X and this is the demand curve for Y. For example, price of X increases, but price of Y is constant. What will happen? What will happen to the demand? What will happen to the demand of X and demand of Y? According to the law of a demand, if price of X increases, the demand of X must decrease. That means, let's say initially we are at this point. Price increases, we move from this point to this point. This is the initial price, this is the later price. Demand decreases. Here we have a prices. Here we have a quantity demanded of X. Here we have a prices, here we have a quantity demanded of Y. Price increases, quantity demanded will decrease. In case of X, but what will happen to the Y? The price of Y is constant. According to the law, demand of Y remains constant. But as Y is a substitute of X, what will happen? The decrease in the demand of X, the demand of X will increase the demand of Y even at a constant price of Y. Why? Because the customer will shift the preferences from X to Y as X and Y are closely substitute products. What will happen at the curve of Y? Either it, we will move along the curve or we will shift. Initially, we are at this point. There is no change in the price of Y, but demand of Y increases. That means we have to shift the demand curve outward. At the same price, the demand of Y increases. Why? Because X and Y are closed substitutes. So this is how this is how the determinants of demand can affect the demand quantity demanded of any product other than the price of the product. You can you can try all all uh, the determinants one by one in a way. I just explain over here, and you can check how the curve will shift outward or inward. Okay, now let's discuss about the supply. 
Now again, when we are discussing about the supply, we have to consider ourselves as producer. When we were discussing our, uh, uh, we were discussing the demand, we consider ourselves as consumer. So according to the law of supply, again taking all other things constant, such as variables, means we are we just develop uh, the relationship between price of commodity X and quantity supplied of commodity X. All other factors which may affect the quantity supply of X are taken as constant. So according to the law of a supply, now think like a producer. If price of your commodity increases in the market, what would be your initial reaction? Definitely being a producer, we increase the supply as the market price of our product increases. And this is the law of a supply. Law of a supply says if price of a commodity X increases, its quantity supply will also increase. Definitely taking other things constant. If we if we remove this check, definitely this, this relationship may not exist. Now, on the basis of this relationship, this would be the supply equation. Again, it would be a straight line equation, and this plus sign says the positive relationship between quantity supply of X and price of X. If price increases, supply increases. If price decreases, supply decreases. This would be the, the graphical representation of a supply curve. If, we, if price increases, we move along the curve in upward direction. Why? Because price increases, supply increases. As whenever the price of a product increases, it would be beneficial for the producer to supply more units into the market, taking all other things constant. If price of a price of product decreases, we move along the curve from up to down. Price decreases, quantity supply will also decreases. Now, discuss the determinants of supply. As we have discussed the determinants of the demand, same we have a determinant of supply. Determinants of supply would be those variables which or those factors which may affect the quantity supply of a product other than the price of the product. And those determinants include input prices, technology, government regulations, number of the firms, substitutes in product production, taxes, producer expectation, etc. The, these are basically those determinants or those factors which may affect the quantity supplied by the producer other than the price of the product. And as we have discussed uh, in case of our demand, whenever there is any change in the determinants, there, there would be a shift in the supply curve. Input prices reduces. In case of input prices, as government reduces the, uh, the price of the petroleum product, and petroleum uh, product are uh, one of the major input of manufacturing and production industry. So as government decreases the, the petroleum price of the petroleum products, that means input prices decreases. When input prices decreases, that means now cost of a production of a producer reduces. When cost of a production of a product uh, of a product reduces, now producer can supply more units on the same price. Producers supply more units on the same price. That means the supply curve will shift outward. Now, at, even at this price, producer can supply the Q2 units. And initially, the producer were supplying Q1 units. You can, you can apply all these uh, situation as uh, we, we have applied in case of demand determinants. For example, advancement of the technology. Whenever there is advancement of the technology, the cost of the production reduces. Whenever there is a cost of the production, uh, decrease in the cost of the production, the producer will increase the supply. Supply curve will shift downward. For example, government regulation. Government uh, uh, add some taxes. Government levy some new taxes on, uh, on producers. When government levies some new taxes on producers, that means now producers have to pay more taxes. That means cost of a production uh, increases for the producers. Now, on the same, same price, 
the producer cannot supply same units they have to decrease the supply in order to maintain the cost of the production in that case the supply curve will shift from inward initially a producer will uh, supplying q2 units but as taxes increases the producer reduces the supply even at a constant price so supply curve will shift from this uh, from s2 to s1 so this is how you can apply all these uh, situation uh, to study the shifting of the uh, supply curves now let's discuss about the market equilibrium if you remember in the last class we discussed about the market market is a place where buying and selling take place buying means producers uh, buying means consumers would be there and selling means producers would also be there equilibrium equilibrium is basically a is a state of balance between market demand and supply there is no excess demand or supply equilibrium is a condition is a equilibrium is a balanced condition there would be no imbalance in a market at equilibrium condition right so now we have to discuss about the market equilibrium market is a place when we are buying and selling take place that means market is a place where all all the producers would be there with all the powers of the producers now what are the powers of the producers supply is the power of a producer information is the power of a uh, producer uh, producers have complete information not only about uh, his or her product but Uh, but the the competitors, but uh, about the market condition, about uh, uh, economic condition, uh, uh, about um, government policies, etc. So market would be a place where producers uh, producers would be there with all the powers of the producers, as well as consumers would be there with all the powers of the consumers. Now, what is the power of the consumer? The power of the consumer includes information. decrease in the demand move to the uh, the substitutes find alternatives etc so uh, uh, these would be the uh, the powers of the consumer by which they they may affect the market along with the consumers and producers there is another party present in market and that is government government would government would be there as a regulatory party as a monetary party uh, as someone who making rules and regulations who apply rules and regulation who monitor rules and regulation so market is a place where producers would be there consumers would be there and government as a monetary body would be there and equilibrium would be a condition where demand and supply would be equals to each other there would be a there would be a condition at this point whatever the price set that is that price set is known as the market price and whatever whatever the the quantity set that quantity is known as the equilibrium quantity and this is basically a true price of a product true true price means if you want to set a, a high price of your product Uh, as compared to its worth you can't definitely uh, consumer knows the worth of your product your competitors knows the worth of your product you can't set a high price a uh, higher price uh, of your product if the product is not that worthy same as with the case you can't you can't lower you can't set a very low price of a product if the the worth of a product is very high so equilibrium price also indicates the worth of a product it it is it is a true price of a product right other than the equilibrium condition there would be two more condition which may exist in a market one is the surplus and other one is the shortage at low price here we have a low price and this is the equilibrium price low price is less than the equilibrium price whenever the price is lower than the equilibrium price whenever the price is lower than the equilibrium price what will happen the demand would be greater than the supply okay at this price here we have a supply of a product and here we have a demand of a product demand is greater than the supply whenever the demand is greater than the supply that would that would 
indicate the shortage in a market okay next is high price here is the high price whenever the price is is high higher than the current price what what happened this would be the demand of a product and this would be the supply of a product and you can you can see at a higher prices supply is greater than the demand that means there is a surplus of that product in a market so there there could be two other possibilities in a market other than the equilibrium surplus or shortage now whenever there is a shortage what will happen now first how shortage created shortage created because of the low prices whenever there is a shortage in a market what will happen it will it will push the prices up whenever there is a shortage in a market there will be a, there would be a higher pressure on the prices when price start increasing what will happen to the demand demand start decreasing according to the law of supply uh, law of demand when prices start increasing what will happen to the supply according to the law of supply when price increases supply also start increasing that means whenever there is a shortage there would be upward pressure on our prices and we, we we may start moving in this direction if i show you whenever there is a shortage upward pressure on our prices demand start decreasing supply start increasing that what will happen we move in this direction because demand is decreasing as we move up at the curve the demand will decrease and supply start increasing that means we move in this direction supply start increasing and this will keep continuing until we reach at this equilibrium point so when we reach the equilibrium point this movement stops because balance in a market again again prevail what if, what happen if there is a surplus in the market whenever there is a surplus in the market there would be a downward pressure on the prices whenever there is a downward pressure on the prices what will happen supply start decreasing and demand start increasing when supply decreases that means we move in this direction and when demand increase we will move in this direction and again this movement continue till we achieve this point and this all scenario is known as the price stressing price stressing is the price adjustment procedure through market forces and what are the market forces consumers behavior and producers behavior in shortage consumer increase uh, due to the increase in the in the consumer demand price prices are start increasing in a surplus due to the uh, uh, in uh, at a higher prices due to the uh, the lower demand uh, from the customer side the prices of a product start decreasing so this is how the market equilibrium of any product will will prevail in a market now let's discuss the government policies of price control usually uh, government won't uh, uh, government won't interfere in the market until or unless there is some situation in which government needs to intervene otherwise usually most of the products prices set in in market by the market forces that means by the the demand uh, side demand, by the by the consumer prices and by the producers prices uh, not ev not every product price is set by the government usually market forces or market demand and market supply determine uh, the the final price of the product sometimes government needs to intervene 
in uh, to control the prices in that specific conditions government usually adopt two types of the policies and these policies are known as uh, price control policies now let's discuss these policies the first policy is known as price ceiling this is the maximum price set by the government that means if government adopts price ceiling policy then government set a maximum price in a market producers are allowed to 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 charge less than that particular uh, uh, price but producers are not allowed to charge higher than that price because this this would be a maximum price set by the government and usually it is somewhere somewhere below the equilibrium point this is the this is the some this is the graphical representation of the price ceiling price whenever government adopts the price ceiling policy they set a maximum limit of a price number 1 and usually usually not always but usually this maximum limit is somewhere below the market equilibrium price now the question is why government set somewhere below the market equilibrium price because government think that this market equilibrium price is higher than the worth of a product the the product price should be lower than the market equilibrium price that is why government set the the price ceiling and usually uh, this, uh, this um, particular policy adopted by the government in very specific condition for example government adopts price ceiling uh, for medicines in epidemics or in pandemics in the current situation as the demand of uh, medicines specific medicines is very high definitely it would uh, increase it, it it may uh, give a higher uh, it may increase the prices in the market so government government seal the prices of the medicines in pandemics or epidemics so that price of the medicines won't increase okay now what will be the 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 effects of price ceiling policy price ceiling policy may create shortage as price sealed price is less than the the equilibrium price producers are not uh, producers uh, at this particular price producer will uh, producer will stop the supply of the product in that case definitely supply will reduces and uh, and, the, and the demand is high then the shortage can create in a market okay as this particular demand is high uh, a consumer will a consumer will ready to buy that that particular product at any price so it may create a black market right so if government won't apply this policy with proper arrangement then price ceiling may lead to the black market why because the equilibrium price of the product is higher than the sealed price much less than this price producer stops the supply in the product the uh, consumer are willing to buy the product even at a higher prices so this is this this this, this environment leads to the black market so uh, the after effects of the price ceiling initially shortage and shortage come back into the black market there is another uh, after effects of the price ceiling and that is the gray market gray market uh, basically means uh, in case of a price ceiling producers may start charging those services even they were providing free of cost initially free initially home delivery is free uh, by the producer or uh, um, after sale services free by the producer but because of the the sealed prices is a possibility that a producer may charge uh, uh, the home delivery and uh, service after the sale so so this this type these would be the examples of the gray market second policy which government may adopt in order to control the price is the price floor this is the minimum price set by the government and usually it is above the equilibrium price this is the equilibrium price and price floor usually it's somewhere higher than the uh, uh, higher than uh, than the 
uh, equilibrium price and definitely when price is higher than the, the equilibrium price it may lead to the surplus uh, the best example of the price floor is the minimum wage rate. Government usually set the minimum wage rate and minimum wage rate are usually higher than the market uh, wage rate of the labor or of the workers. And if government set, set, sets very high minimum wage rate, it may create the unemployment. Because, because because of the higher um, minimum wage rate, now producer hire less less workers, uh, uh, less workers, and it may also create underemployment. Underemployment means the, the producer are paying less than the qualification of the worker, less than the experience of a worker, less than the less than the the expertise of the worker, and this. This can on, this usually happen in case the minimum wage rate sets very high of the price floor. So this is the the end of this uh, particular topic. Where this chapter uh, for the practice of this topic. In this chapter, we have they have discussed the uh, about the demand. They have discussed about the determinants of the demand. Then they have discussed about the supply, determinants of the supply. They discuss about the market, uh, equilibrium, etc. Right? Just the government policies. So you can cover this topic from this chapter. Let's do some uh, questions from the exercise. An exercise. We have different type of the questions. Okay, let's do this particular question. I will I would like to discuss question number six right now. In the question number six, what they are saying, what effect will each of the following have on supply of auto tires? They have give, given us different condition and we have to apply all the condition one by one in order to check the effect on the supply of auto tires, only the supply. They are not talking about the demand. They are just, they are just saying we need to check the supply of auto tires. We have to check the effect on supply of auto tires for this condition. Let's do this particular question. First condition is, okay, we have to consider the auto tire industry. This is the normal supply curve of auto tire industry. Here we have a price, here we have a quantity supplied of the auto tire industry. For example, currently we are at this point. Now, first condition is a technological advance in the methods of producing tires. Now, what do you think? When there is, a, there is a technological advancement in the production of auto tires, what will be the effect on the supply of auto tires? Due to the technological advancement, cost of the production reduces. Whenever cost of a production reduces, producer start producing more units at the same cost. That means they can supply more units at the same price. And if this is the situation, then what will happen? The supply curve will shift outward. At the same price, producers start supplying more products. So this is how we can show the effect of this situation on a supply on a supply of auto tires. Now let's discuss the second condition. For second condition, we have to draw a new curve. Again, this is the this is the supply curve. Right? The condition is 
a decline in the number of firms in the tire industry this is the represent this this supply curve for example this supply curve represents the tire industry now if the number of the firms will reduce what will happen to the supply definitely initially the supply will reduce so the supply curve will shift inward but there is another effect of this policy initially the supply will reduce but after some time the remaining firms will capture that particular market share uh, and the supply will increase again so in this second effect the supply will shift from from this green to almost near to the red so there could be the two effect initial effect is the decrease in the supply and then the later effect would be again the initial supply okay third is condition is an increase in the price of rubber used in the production of tires rubber is the major input that means input prices increases let's draw the supply curve again here we have a price here we have a quantity supply this is the supply curve due to the increase in the price of the rubber what will happen to the supply the cost of a production increases when the cost of a production increases now producer can't supply the same unit can't produce the same units so the supply will decrease curve will shift inward so this is how you have to apply all these conditions on a supply curve right so we have discussed initial three you have to complete others there is another question which i need to discuss here for example let's discuss question number four what they are saying question number four in question number four they are saying how will each of the following changes in demand and or supply affect equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity in a competitive market that is do price and quantity rise fall or remain unchanged or are the answers indeterminate because they depend on the magnitude of the shifts use supply and demand to verify your answers that means we have to apply this condition on a market equilibrium and after applying this condition individually we have to tell them what is the change in the price in the demand in the market price in the market demand etc let's discuss initial few conditions first what we have to do we have to draw a market market means where we have quantity demand as well as quantity supply market is a place where we have a quantity demand and quantity supply market is a place we have where we have a demand as well as supply and this is the equilibrium condition in first condition they said supply decreases and demand is constant what does it mean supply decreases means supply curve will shift upward but demand remain constant what would be the nucleum point this would be the nucleum point at new equilibrium point this is the new price market price and this would be the new market demand so how you will how you will give uh, how you can tell the effect you can say 
market price increases but market demand decreases right okay next condition again in order to apply next condition we have to make a market this is supply this is demand this is price and this is q demand decreases and supply is constant decrease in demand means demand curve will shift downward right this is the initial equilibrium point and this would be the new equilibrium point intersection of demand and supply at new equilibrium point this is the new price and this is the new quantity market price and market quantity so market price reduces as well as market demand also reduces now you have to give the reasons also why it, it happens because demand decreases whenever demand decreases supply is constant but demand is reduces what will happen in a market there would be a there would be a surplus in the market and whenever there is a surplus in the market there will be downward pressure on prices that is why prices decreases as well as the quantity quantity uh, market quantity also decreases so this is how you can you can apply all these conditions uh, in, a, uh, in a market equilibrium and check the effect on market price and market demand so this is basically the end of our topic today we have done with the economic environment from next uh, next class we will start a new topic thank you